Good uh, evening, everybody. How are we doing? I can see some familiar faces from before or from my booth. Anyway, um, we're gathering here for, uh, I guess, an uh, everlasting topic, the brain health. It has been becoming more and more important because I, the other day I was watching a, watching a show and saying Canada is among the developed countries. Canada, we have a higher rate of brain-related uh, issues like dementia, Parkinson, Alzheimer. Eventually I find out that is not a bad thing in some ways because it means we all live longer to an age where we, we used to pass away at a war or some kind of a, a plague or something, so we die earlier. Now we actually age older once you climb over the age of, uh, let's say, 80 or 70 even, 80. Between 80 and 85 is a very interesting age range where people have a very high uh, occurrence of all these old age conditions. So since we are all able to live longer, have, a, I guess, more uh, longer life, now we are more exposed to the health conditions of an uh, aging process. And that's why we are more and more um, looking into this subject. Everybody is more concerned about if we age older, what happens to us? Because we are now seeing a lot of nursing home situations. We see a lot of older people. We go through all of that. We take care of the, our elderly. And then what happens to us when we get older? And that's why the topic uh, is becoming more important right now. And if we leave that to, uh, let's say, the traditional way of dealing with it, we wait until we were diagnosed with certain, certain things, and then it's harder to deal with them. It is like uh, if we wait until something broke. Let's say the hospital is more or less waiting for something to drop. And we either break it to pieces or break into cracks. And then we try to see how we can fix that. So that's where a lot of people are um, uh, allowing us to do. But that's not the right way. If, if, if there's somebody watching out for that and see whether this is inching into a place where it's going to drop, we have a helping hand to there and they say, hey, hey, no, 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 not there. <laughs> Go to a safer place and keep it there. And that's how, how we come in to help. Now, the five elements and the brain health. We are looking at the nutritional approach. Now, there are some basic facts about the brain we would like to talk about. The brain is a very important part of our body. It's more like uh, Parliament Hill or like uh, the White House. If somebody climbs over the fence, what happens? They get arrested or they get shot at. So it's a very, it's a, the brain is more like a headquarter or like a White House. Or uh, for Canada, it's uh, the Parliament Hill. Well, we don't want anything to cross it. And, and it is uh, only 2% in the body, in the, in the weight, compared to the whole body, but it consumes 20% oxygen from the whole body. And because of that, we'll talk about it a little later, our brain is protected by something called a blood-brain barrier. I think a lot of us uh, have heard about it. It's a very complicated uh, uh, idea. Um, it, it talks about the blood-brain barrier is a separation of the circulating blood from the brain extracellular fluid. There are, uh, there is a, it's, it's more like a tight and neat protection for the brain cells. Because what happens in the brain when we have a meningitis, it's very scary. We could virtually die in hours if we don't get it treated. So that's why when something invades the brain, we are more or less uh, in an emergency situation. If we don't take care of it right away, we might be in big trouble. If we become a vegetable person, then we are pretty much dead, basically. So, so this blood-brain barrier is to filter everything out. 
which means it will filter the toxins, the germs, the virus, worms, everything out, including medication. A lot of medication are blocked out by this, even herbal remedies. And that's why there are uh, the second, uh, the second uh, or the third facts about the brain is the brain is actually responsible for almost 80% of disorders in our body. A lot of things are related to the brain. If the brain is not functioning, then the body gets... We have actually about, um, about 400 brain-related disease that's listed in... Uh, in uh, there's a website called brainfacts.org. If you Google that and look at that, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z, under the A category, there are about almost 20 different conditions, disease. And if you click open any of them, or a lot of them, for example, autism, the bottom one, if you click open, it says there is no cure for autism. And there are many other things like this. A very high percentage of conditions in the brain is deemed incurable by our traditional world. And we, we all know about that. There are a lot of uh, conditions that's very difficult to treat. It's actually because of this uh, blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier block out a lot of things, filter out a lot of things, and it's more like a castle. It's a castle built up to protect the brain from attacks from various sources, uh, uh, ways. However, if there is something going on inside the brain already, like this morning, when I was in a rush to come to here and set things up, I was just fumbling my stuff in the, from the car, and then the wind was very, very, very strong. And I opened my, opened my car door, and the wind actually blew the door open uh, or close, and it actually bumped my head. <laughs> I almost, I was locked out and I said, I have a lecture to go. I have to do a seminar today. Don't lock me out. At least let me wake up. So we actually get traumas and accidents and things like that that kind of attack us, kill us somehow. So if we, if we don't know how to protect us, then we're in big trouble. We have a lot of people that have brain trauma, things like that, and then they live with it forever. If you know how to, how to I actually immediately I said, what do I take to, to help with it? So I can be a norm, pretty normal and don't lose my memory and all that. Because a lot of people lose their memory with a car accident or something. They, they, they become, we call dementia. They lose memory and everything. So this not, last thing is 80% of the brain tissue is water. So if you know that, you have to make yourself pretty much um, we call hydrated. You need to drink enough water. Don't, a 2% drop of water fluid in your body actually cause about 30% loss of your brain power. So it's, uh, it's a very, very uh, dangerous situation if you continue to de dehydrate your brain. Your brain actually gets smaller. Now, the brain disorders, how, how many, let's say, yeah, these are all the different disorders. Dementia, senior dementia, Alzheimer. Could anybody tell me what they are about? What is dementia? Okay, okay. And senile dementia. Prostate. Okay. Anyway, anyway, senile means old age. Okay. So dementia. It's, it's not a disease, actually. De the dementia is not a disease. It's a description of a, a set of conditions that are described as um, having dementia conditions or problems. So that's not, it's actually just a descriptive uh, uh, term to describe this different type of condition like memory loss, cognitive dysfunctions, and uh, mood swings, all of these um, uh, problems together. It's not a specific disease by itself. Senile dementia means old age. So when we get older, we tend to get that. And uh, Alzheimer, 
Anybody tell me a little bit about it? Alzheimer? What's the difference between Alzheimer and dementia? Worst. Okay. So Alzheimer is a brain disease. It is actually a disease. It, it, it uh, involves the de degenerative loss of brain cells in the way of um, protein fragments in the brain cells. They are kind of clogged and then blocked and then intercepted by these protein fragments in between the brain cells. Eventually, the brain cells die. The brain cells lose its function because it's all clotted and tangled up, and then they lose function. It is a disease. It, it can be very uh, progressive, and it is, um, a di it is one part of the dementia, or uh, one of the categories. Of, it belongs to the big umbrella of dementia. So dementia could be, uh, could be let's say, happened by a car accident or when you bump your head on the car door or something. If you, are, if you have a serious enough, if you have a concussion on a, uh, a hockey field three, four, five times, eventually you could, be, you could have dementia because you lose all the memory, you lose all your functions, and you lose everything, and then have dementia when you are maybe 20 years old. So it doesn't ha you don't have to be senile, have to be old age in order to get the dementia problem. It could be a vascular condition or a trauma to the brain or some other uh, medication that caused it or some other things. There are many different ways to cause all this altogether. Now memory loss, insomnia, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, uh, there are many more of these conditions. Headache, migraine, Down syndrome. Uh, so there, there are lots of these uh, common problems, and uh, the way how to deal with it, <clears throat> because, the, because as I said, the brain is blocking out a lot of things. A lot of medication doesn't really help with it, and sometimes they might come with side effects that cause more problems than it can solve. And that's why it's very important to understand why or how the brain is being, uh, having these uh, degenerative conditions, all these uh, problems. And if we, we, if we look at it from the perspective of the five elements in the body, then we, have a, we could have a better understanding and we could have a better approach to how to solve the problem. Now, as I said, the brain is well protected. So it's more like a castle. It's a castle that protects the, the, the brain cells inside so if you, if you uh, use, let's say, when you have a headache, what do you do? A headache. When you have a headache. Okay. Water, drinking water, and lie down. Okay. Eyes on the head. Okay. So there are many different ways trying to. Some people, if you are, if you are very health conscious and all that, then you might find a better or natural way. But the most, most easily is to take something. What do you take? If you take a, yeah, Advil, right? Advil, Tylenol, whatever you, you can. Even marijuana, right? Some people do marijuana. It's legal now. And it could be a morphine when it's serious enough. However, as, as you can see, when you have a sleeping problem, you take, some people take a pill, right? When you have a depression, you can take a pill. You have a dopamine, I mean, you have a Parkinson, you can take a pill. There are many pills for a lot of things. However, if you look very, very closely to the pills, they are not really designed to make your body stronger. They kind of deal with the symptom, pacify, help you tide it over, deal with it. Uh, uh, to get overnight, so you can sleep, so sort of. Let's say when the headache is, uh, just take the headache for example. If you have a headache in the, in, the, in the head, there are many parts of the head. If the headache is somewhere in the, in the frontal lobe here, it actually could be brewing up from your stomach. If you have stomach heat, that's shooting up, it could be in the frontal lobe. 
If you have a sinus infection, you can have a headache somewhere here. If you have a headache on top of the head, it's actually, it could be a, a we call a liver fire blazing to the top. It's a liver fire blazing. There are too much heat inside the liver, and it's causing that. And if it's in the back of the head, it's actually a, usually a kidney weakness. It's not able to power the blood flow to the, to the head, to the brain, and then you have a headache in the back. If it's on the side, you could call it a migraine or something, and it is usually to do with the gallbladder. It's the gallbladder meridian channels on here. Let's say if you have a headache inside the middle of the brain, you don't know where it is. You don't know uh, what is going on. And then you drink water, it doesn't work. You do something else, it doesn't work. And then you have to take something. And take something, this time worked, but a lot of times it doesn't work. When you have a really big headache, you could take in the bigger, three big pills, and then you did go to sleep. And then the next morning you woke up, and you wonder why I, I dropped my, my glass. Because your finger, one of the fingers lost power. And then you slipped and then dropped it. And you say, well, what happened? Is, oh, why don't I feel my finger? Why is it numb, tingling, and all that? Then you are surprised. You said, what's going on? I need to find out. So you go to the hospital. You could be doing C MRI, CT scan, everything, right? You check out what's going on with that finger, and you suspect that you might have a stroke. However, when you take all this detailed look and then check everything, the report comes back negative. Everything is okay. Okay, now you go back. And then the, the pain comes and goes, comes and goes, Actually, the first time, it is a mini stroke. It's so mini that the MRI cannot detect it because it's so small. It just affects a very small fraction of the brain tissue that controls that finger. So the next time, you go home and relax, and then there's nothing you could do, and then the, the, there is a bigger headache, even, than, even bigger than the first one. So you take a bigger, bigger talent, bigger something. What happens is, the next morning, you wake up and say, why do I don't feel my leg or hand or you twist your, your, your face and everything is your doing or something. And this time, you're really diagnosed with something called stroke because there was massive bleeding in the head and, and, and under the cover of something going, uh, eventually something else happened. And that's, and that's a lot of fact uh, about our body. We wait until something happens. But if you're smart enough, you might look at that and detect that before it happens. Say, hey, there's something going on in there, and I check my blood, I check this and check that. I f find out if I don't do something, something like this major problem might happen. So instead of waiting for it to happen, you could look at the, the body, how it works. For example, we talk about the five elements and the body. Actually, when we, when, whenever we have something in the, in, the, in the brain happening, any of the brain conditions, actually a lot of times, most of times, it starts from the body. We call the five elements. The, what are the five elements? Anybody? Okay, right there, right? So, okay. So water, wood, fire, earth, and metal. And they in, uh, individually stand for kidney for water regu uh, regulation, liver for the wood, and then the heart is fire, uh, earth is the, uh, the stomach or spleen, and the metal is the, is the lungs. So the five elements are chained together like that. Now, if some, they are, if you, there is, a, there is a movie about the cell. You know the, how small a cell is. Cell is almost invisible to the eye. But if you, if you have a, a small, like a, a microscope, you can actually go into the cell and look at the very fancy world of the cell. So there's a, a lot of things. It's very, very complicated. You just, imagine, you just wonder how wonderful it is the God created us as small as a, there's a lot of activities inside the cell. So this whole system is, is based on, on the five elements. Uh, this is actually the genius of the Chinese history 
of 5,000 years or 10,000 years. They had it from two, three, four thousand 4,000 years ago. We have this system that works. Let's say the kidney regulates water. So a lot of things, most of things related to the water relates to the kidney. For example, if you see somebody has a swollen ankle, it's actually kidney weakness. Kidney and spleen, sometimes they work together, but kidney is one of the major contribution of water regulation. They filter the wa excess water out of the blood, and that's how you, how you reduce the, the, the swollenness. Usually the, the edema or swollen water retention in the body creep up from the ankle first, and then it come up to your, th your, your calf and thighs, and then you come up to the body, when you climb up to the body, you get fluid in the lungs, fluid in the kidney, fluid in the heart, fluid in the liver, and then we drown. Because when, you, when your, your, your lungs is packed with water, you can't breathe anymore. Now that's serious, so you don't want that to happen. And the second thing, let's say this kidney again, water, regulates water. If somebody gets up to, in the night to go to the washroom too often, could be in the daytime, but nighttime is more typical. If you get up one time, it's a slight weakness, for example. If you get up uh, two, three times, it's getting a little more serious. If you do more and more, five times, six times, ten times, then you're pretty much uh, uh, living in the washroom. That's all uh, kidney weakness. Bladder. Bladder is uh, the kidney meridian. Now, Again, the kidney r regulates all these things. If you, have a, if you have a knee problem, when you get upstairs and you feel the sore knee, it's a kidney weakness. We call the knee is the second kidney of the body. If you have lower back pain, that's, a, that's not necessarily a muscle. It's actually a kidney weakness because the, the, we call this is the, the lower back is the house of the kidney. It houses the kidney in there. So if your kidney is weak, give you trouble, you feel uncomfortable, you feel sore, you feel you feel problem there. Now, if you get a headache, dizziness, tinnitus, noise, ring in the ear, that's also kidney weakness. So it's not, if you drop a, a ear drop or something, it's not really going to solve the problem because the problem is rooted somewhere else. So we call the, the ear is the opening to the kidney. So any hearing loss, tinnitus, infection, or hearing loss, whatever, it actually relates to the kidney. Now, the, the, uh, the eye is the opening to the liver. So you, if you have difficulty opening eyes in the, in the sunshine, in the bright glare of the snow, you have, a eye, you have a liver problem there. So you need to look at the liver more closely. If you have glaucoma, cataracts, and all that, because the liver is not regulating, pulling the excessive buildup in the, in the eyes. And then the nose is to where? The nose relates to the lungs. You breathe with the nose. So if you have sinusitis or something going on in the nose, bleeding and all that, you have something like we call uh, lung um, deficiency or indeficiency in the lungs. And similarly with the, 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 the mouth, it's more to the, to the stomach, and the tip of the tongue relates to your heart. If you see somebody with a red tip of the tongue, it's a hard fire. We call it anxiety, hard fire, and all that. So these are all related. These are all related. Now, the kidney is also responsible for menstrual cycle problems, infertility, men's like a ED, erection dysfunction, or there's uh, water, and then we have uh, cold hands and feet. We call that kidney young energy deficiency. There, there are many more problems related to the kidney. So when the kidney is weaker, you could be, you could, you could be, uh, when you go to the hospital, you, the, the, the doctor say, you are okay with your kidney. You don't really need uh, dialysis or transplant. But in our medicine, we say you have something going on in there, you need to address it. You need to strength, strengthen that in order not to take all the pills to, to deal with them. Now, if the kidney regulates water properly, and you have healthy, uh, clean water, good water from the kidney, the kidney water is supposed to water the liver woods. Wood is like trees and grass and plants and all that. So if you water them without drowning them, 
If you drown them, you got water retained in the body, which means you water too much. Now, if you water them properly, they'll grow big. They are like trees, uh, plants, and herbs, and everything. You can harvest them, cut them down, cut them down, and then you feed them, in, make them into firewood. For the next one is a hard fire. So you, when you have a strong kidney, strong liver, then you have a strong heart. The heart is circulating good. You don't have palpitation. You don't have a, a pain, chest pain. You don't have a heart murmur. You don't have this and that circulation problem. The heart is, is doing well when kidney and liver supports them. You have enough firewood to burn, and then you have a strong body. Now, when the fire, hot fire, burns down the wood, which is a firewood, it, the, it's like the ashes falling down to the ground. And then we create the earth, which is the stomach of earth. If you have strong kidneys, strong liver, strong heart, then you have a strong stomach. If we don't have a strong stomach, then we, are, we always feel bloated. We always have food sensitivities. We have allergies to a lot of things, lactose intolerance. There are many things that could be wrong with the stomach, even constipation, diarrhea, all of that. So now, this, the earth is supposed to be productive. If it's productive, it produces metal. Metal is like precious stuff, which is nutrients in our body. Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to, to Z, I guess. And then you have... Um, you, have, you can have uh, the iron, potassium, magnesium, zinc, selenium. There are many different nutrients from the stomach. If you don't have a strong stomach, you would be find out deficient in ions, deficient in selenium, deficient in many other things, and you have sensitivities to this and the allergy to pollen or to, even to the air, to water, whatever. You would be having a lot of issues. Now, if you have a strong stomach, strong system, that's getting all the nutrients from your food, but you have to eat healthy. You either eat everything healthy, or you take some supplements to, to supplement whatever you're missing. And then, even if you have a strong earth or stomach, you still need a strong hard fire to dissolve them. You know, when there is a piece of rock or ore of gold, it's not useful until you, you take out the, uh, the gold from the rock, and then you dissolve them into a liquid. And then you pour them into a, a, a mold. And then you make a diamond ring. That's when it becomes useful or valuable. You can sell $25,000 for that diamond ring. But you have to put it together. That's where the hard fire comes in. It will dissolve everything, make them into liquid or fluid, and then they merge with the kidney water. So you eventually go back to the water and merge with the water and the whole cycle starts again. And that's how our system is designed to be perfect until we are older or until we hit our head with the, with the door. <laughs> so it's very important to keep the whole system running as, as young or as old as, as you can. You have to keep it going. Yes? Metal is the lungs. Yeah, the lungs. Yeah, eventually the lungs, you can breathe better. You don't have uh, asthma. You don't have coughing. You don't have uh, shortness of breath. And, uh, and all of them work together. So all of this work together. And then eventually, what happens when the earth is working well, you get all the nutrients. And with all the nutrients, you have like uh, rice to cook. Now you can cook something that, that, that will travel to your bone marrow. And then bone marrow would, have, would have create red blood cells, white blood cells, and blood plasma, and all of that. And that helps with the circulation. It goes to the circulation, the bloodstream, and then eventually it will push up to the brain. When we push, push all of this uh, uh, blood flow, and the blood flow comes with the nutrients, and then they, they, uh, they nourish the brain with the oxygen, nutrition, blood flow, and all that, then the brain starts to wake up. And that's actually the back door to the brain. We have two major arteries here going up and two major uh, veins going down. So we communicate all the time. We take out the toxins, bring up the oxygen. Oxygen, nutrition, blood flow, and all that. Toxins going out, and that's how we heal our brain. If you don't have a, have a powerful system, the blood doesn't even come up here. That's why we get dizzy, we get a headache, we get a <laughs> fatigue, we get a memory loss, concentration problems, energy 
problems, and, uh, and uh, even schizophrenia, bipolar, a lot of things can go on when we, when we allow our body to do that. So this, uh, it, for the brain, for it to work, it has to work in the right way. It promotes each other, generate each other, uh, enhance each other. However, they can destroy each other too. They can violate each other, destroy each other, and uh, uh, insult each other in different ways. For example, the kidney water is supposed to, supposed to uh, water, uh, have enough fluid and water, and then we call in fluid in the body. Now, if you have enough of that, it'll keep the heart fire in control. If you have uh, this, we call this uh, uh, California fire or fire in BC in the forest, you really need some rain. When there is some flood somewhere, you need a sunshine to come out, to dry it up. And that's what, how our body regulates itself. If you have excess of something, then something else has to rescue it. And then you have a way of solving the problem. And, uh, and uh, that's how even the, the earth with the stomach is the same similarly. Uh, like the stomach needs uh, bio and, and digestive enzyme to help to process the food. And the other way around, if you have too much of this, too, much, uh, too little of that, then you will have too much problem. So everything is like that. It's controlled each, controlling each other. It's, it is like when the water comes, you have a bank, which is the earth. The earth controls the river where it goes. If the earth is not strong enough, it will break the bank and flood everything. So that's how the body... How the body is uh, like, like the metal is, metal is like, a, like a knife cut the wood to so control the wood. And then the earth kind of uh, inhabit the mountain, so it control the earth so that it doesn't, doesn't, the rain doesn't wash everything away. So it's all like in controlling, uh, promoting in harmony like that until we, we cause some kind of an imbalance. When something is weaker, it drags everything else down. The whole cycle starts to, to collapse. So this is uh, the details about the, the too much uh, metal overreacts wa over water, and too much water overreacts wood, too much wood overreacts fire. It's like that. So it's like too much wood, you, you dump onto a fire, you, you suffocate the fire, there's no more fire. So it's like, it's like um, uh, all the details here. I don't have to go through everything. We don't have enough time to do that. If you want to take a picture, you can. But uh, right, hurry up. <laughs> and, uh, and then this one is a different way of looking at it. Because the, um, the kidney and liver, they all really, we, we were talking about the eyes to the liver, ear to the kidney, and the uh, uh, tongue to the heart, and all of that. And the five elements. So the five elements, water, wood, fire, earth, and metal, each have a profound effect on one another, either creative or destructive. And the five elements with the body. They all, they also, the five elements also work with the, uh, the emotions. For example, kidney controls or uh, fear. Uh, damages the kidney. So if you hear somebody say, oh, when the thunder shudders, I kind of pee in my pants. <laughs> the fear, right? The fear caused uh, uh, the urine to go. It's like uh, 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 anger damages the liver. So if somebody is always angry, they get a problem with the liver. And when the liver is wrong, is, uh, is not doing well, then they are more angry. So they feed on each other, going in a bad cycle. And this is just more on that. So um, this is the associations of the elemental, the five elements. Now, we want to talk a little bit more about um, how we can maintain our health a little bit, brain health a little better by the six pillars of brain health. Number one is exercise. So you need to exercise, that's, it goes without saying. We all know that. The second one is food and nutrition. We need to eat smarter, think better. We can think better, eat, eat. We can think better when we eat better. Now the third one is um, medical health. So control medical risks. 
You don't wait until you have a problem, pain or something going on in the body, before you do something. Number four is sleep and relaxation. You really need very good sleep and relaxation. Stress and the lack of sleep always cause problems. And the five, number five, mental fitness. Your mind, you have to use it or lose it. We have to, we don't just stare into the sky all the time. We have to do some exercise. We have to use the brain properly. And number six is social interaction. We have to, we can't just limit ourselves in a, in a dark room and then sleep. We have to go out and socialize and talk to people, inter, inter, uh, react with other people. Now, there is a way to use herbal medicine to help the brain. We actually designed one to promote the harmony inside of all five elements. We want the five elements, organs, they work together, promote each other, enhance each other, instead of de destroying each other. So we designed a, a formula to, to do that. It, uh, it uh, promotes liver, kidney, heart functions, boosts the immune system, promotes blood circulation, helps to bring more blood flow, more oxygen, more nutrition to the brain, and normalize the brain and nervous system functions. And um, it's the whole body. And these are the basic um, elements or nutrients. They're actually food-based. Like cordyceps mushroom. The, the Chinese people use it uh, in their soup regularly, daily. They can. It's an expensive uh, one. It, uh, it uh, usually grows on the 3,800 meter above sea level, like Tibetan plateau, uh, very high mountains. Uh, there's a blueberry, reishi mushroom, uh, goji berry, the Nisian barbara is goji berry, uh, Korean ginseng, bacopa. Now these are the details of the uh, uh, ingredients or uh, elements. They are all famous for their function. Sisyphus, uh, that's the dates. We call dates, like that. And the cordyceps, you have to dig it out from the, from the natural mountains. Uh, sometimes ginkgo biloba, grape seed. Now, these are the food items that you can find from your diet, from your superfood market. So the number one is blueberry, uh, olive oil, uh, flax seeds, uh, broccoli, eggs, nuts, chickpeas, dark chocolate, and uh, in, uh, the uh, antioxidants. Uh, wild sal salmon, omega-3 again, avocado. Avocado is one of the very top food. That's good for a lot of other things. And turmeric, pumpkin seeds, and green tea. How many of you are regularly eating these things? Good stuff. That's very good. You're smart. <laughs> Um, well, there are, um, uh, okay, so, yeah, this is uh, almost, do we have any questions? Yes. Uh, where do you practice? Oh, we are at uh, Highway 7, Leslie, uh, 370 Highway 7 East, in Richmond Hill. Nothing in we actually have a lot of people traveling from Montreal, or, uh, Kingston, different cities, even Chicago. They come here to, to see us. We are a little far, but, uh, but if you can make a trip, it's worth it. Because we do, a, we do a full body scan with the brain scan. We check the bodies for the deficiencies. Because it's, it's much better if you know what's going on in the body, what's weak, what's deficient. Sometimes we could be spending tons and tons of money going to a, a, a store where, where you have five million things there. And then you pick a lot of things, you have a cabinet of it, but some of them might not be the best for you, or maybe even detrimental. Sometimes if you overtake something that's not necessarily what your body needs at the time, or you know you, you think you need, but you already supplemented enough, and then you're overdosing yourself. So it's good to have some kind of a system that would be able to guide you through. We actually sort of like, a, like a map out your body. Oh, there is a ditch there. There's a cliff there. 
There is some kind of river there you need to cross that with a bridge over there. You, you do things with a more smarter design, and then you actually spend less money doing that. Okay, right, right, okay. Um, I'm almost 60, okay? If you see me playing tennis, I'm playing a tennis match after this from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock tonight. And I have a big match uh, from the east to uh, west and the east of, Ca of Toronto. I'm the team leader to play a tennis match without age limits against the other side. I'm the men's one. Um, but to, to make it short, it is very important to keep the five elements in good shape and then you, you don't have to be so strictly uh, healthy eating. You can actually indulge yourself a little bit if you are healthy. If you are healthy, you can handle almost a lot of things and your body can deal with some problems. And you can eat some junk food at some times. But if, you are, if, you are alert, if your body allows you to become uh, deficient, then you would develop more and more deficiencies. So it's most important to keep your body strong and healthy that can handle a lot of other things while doing gluten-free and all that. That's important when you, definitely, when you de definitely need it. But if your body is healthy and strong, you don't have to do it. So the most important thing is to get your body going in the right way. Eating is important. Eating healthy is important. You, you follow the general guidelines, yes. Well, autoimmunity is also part of the problem. It's still the five elements going wrong. When the, uh, when, when the, when the auto, like autoimmunity is basically your, your own immune system is attacking your, your good cells, your good s tissues. And that's, and that's because the, the immune, system, is, immune system cells lost its, its judgment. And in order to keep those healthy, you need a generally healthy body. So it's, it's the, the defect body that's allowing that to happen. So in order to, yes. Yes, we have a scanning that you hook up. You know that in the Chinese medicine, you, have, uh, you, can see every th you can see a lot of things from your palm. You can see a lot of things from your tongue. If you stick out your tongue, I say, okay, now you have some, uh, some body heat in the back of the tongue, and that's actually the kidney uh, fire that's burning out of control. And uh, you have grease on the tongue. It's a, it's a stomach uh, heat over, over building up. And, uh, and if your tongue has become too thin, too small, it's some kind of fire burning out of control and you're losing all the fluid. If, if your tongue has become too big, too thick, it's actually because your spleen deficiency and allowing water retention in the body. So there are many different things. Uh, it, same thing with your feet, reflexology, with the iridology. There are, there are many things that we can see from our our hands and feet and the head and the thing, everything. So we have a system that you can hook up and then you, you detect all of that and then it'll tell you about the thyroid function, your blood flow, your oxygen to the brain, and your nervous system functions, all your organs and everything in the body. You get a good picture and you know what to do and you are well educated. It's called, uh, we have two different systems. One of them is called EIS. It's called an electro-interstitial scan. It scans the fluid in between the cells and pick up uh, signals. And we have the other one called EPFX, also called Indigo. That one uh, addresses a uh, more uh, uh, deeper level, like emotions. Uh, for example, if you have, uh, <coughs> if you have uh, um, uh, let's say, trauma, you actually, the brain is like a CD-ROM. It actually records everything as you go. Sometimes you might have forgot, oh, I have that problem. Sometimes if, if, you, have a, if you were bit by a snake, you might forget it, but most of the time you remember it somehow in the back of your mind, and you are always afraid of going to the woods. If you see something like a, like a rope, someone lying there, you think it might be a snake. You walk far away, you say, what's that? I don't want to be bit again. So similarly, all the traumas in our body is lying around in our body affecting our behavior. So there are ways to detect that and cut it off. We are more like, with all of that, you are like walking life with a 
kind of like 10, 5, 50 different uh, uh, strings attached to a kite in the sky. You watch and you walk and you feel heavy. And that's how our life can be when we feel depressed, when we feel stressed out, because we are always worried about something that happened to us before. Now, with the system like that, we can actually cut the strings attached to the, to the, to the kites and let them fly away. And then you heal your body. If you feel, oh, now I feel lighter. I, I don't feel that problem anymore. You, you heal yourself emotionally. And the emotions is connected to a lot of disease in our body. Yes? It's what? Oh, it's like $150. It's not too bad. Yeah. Insomnia, we have this uh, formula for that. Because insomnia is more like a nervous system losing out of control. Your nervous system is weakening, losing out of control. You don't have control over it. When you want to sleep, it doesn't listen to you. So you have to... You have to build the body up so that the, the, the nerves and then the brain cells, they get nourished. They, they don't feel hungry anymore. Then you can sleep. Yeah. Yes? How what? Well, you can give me an email address or something. I can, uh, I can send something to you. Uh, I have a website, it's called sage.ca. There is a, a separate, different uh, a presentation like this that you can uh, record it from before. You can watch that in more detail. Uh, I'm at the booth number uh, 98, if you have the time. And I have products there uh, readily available if you want to buy them. You can actually get a, get a more like a, what do you call it? Um, uh, a good price, a wholesale price or something on it, okay? And it's also on Amazon right now. Uh, okay, I guess uh, my time is up. Thank you very much.